we're going to change the order of service if you will remain standing. We're going to ask Brother Joshua Bujo to come. Take this pulpit. Brother, have your liberty in the Lord. Whatever God chooses for you to do this morning. Can we give the Lord a hand clap? Right now, God, I just, 
I, right now, I just want to sit here. I just want to just want to be left alone, God. I don't want to have all these things in my mind right now. But I'm telling you, sir and ma'am, the things you have flowing in your mind right now, all the weights of the world that that that's keep coming up, it keeps coming to your the forefront of your mind. Is that's God moving upon you? That's God saying, "My plan for you." I have wrote it already. It's just up to you that you make the step the stone. It is up to you that you reach out to me. If you reach out to me, I will grab, I will grab your hand. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on. I felt so dry when I walked in this morning. I, I was seeking God and I felt so dry. But I've learned as a man of God, I've learned through experience, no matter how I feel, it does not stop God from moving. I'm here to tell you, you might have thought, you might have thought you just came into this place today just to hear a sermon, just to see some tattooed guy come and preach the word of God. But I'm here to tell you, God has brought you in this place. But he's trying to change your life because he has a plan that he has for you. And you need to heed to the word of God this morning. You need to make that step.
those things that you have in your past, God is wanting you to deal with them, yes. not to embarrass you. Right. Not to make you feel Come bad, on. but God said, once you deal with them yes. and you confront them, I can take them from yes. you. And I'm telling you, once I take them from you, I will never bring it up, but I'll show you what kind of God I am. Because as soon as it goes through my blood, You see, but the 
But the plan was given to Noah. God didn't just take the ark and poof, it was there. Yes. Noah had a plan. Yes. Noah had a, a communication with God. Noah was before God, right. receiving instruction from God. Right. Yes. But you see, Noah had to put forth the effort right. to build that ark. See, Noah couldn't say, well, it's a little bit easier if we just do two floors. You see, when God gives the plan for your life, a lot of times our expectations are for God to do everything. For God to meet us where we're at. For God to, to, to give everything to us. And he will give it. But we do not want to move from that place of sin or that place of darkness. We want God to pick us up and walk us Come on. Come on. Oh, to Him. You see, God has mercy and God does love us. But I'm telling you, if just like your loved one, or just like your son, just like your daughter, just like your wife or your husband, if you want to see, if they want to show how much they love you and you had to do everything for them, you had to do everything to even get anything out of them to show love, you would start to question some things. Yeah, come on. That's good. He won't ever tell me he loves me. She won't ever tell me he loves she loves me. I gotta do everything before. I gotta I gotta initiate everything. I, I've been through that before. Yeah. <laughs> I know where I'm at. Come on. We get our feelings hurt. Right. We begin to, 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 to start questioning our relationship. Yeah. But we do it to God so much. Come on. That's good. And I'm talking from experience. I'm praying this morning, telling God, I'm so sorry for those times I've given it to you, God. Yes. You didn't deserve any of that, Lord. I've walked away from you. And you were there the whole time. Through everything I've been through. You could have ended my life right there, but you had mercy on me, God. And so many times still today, sometimes I take it for granted. Right. Come on. Come on. Come on. Yes. Stick it to the plan. Yeah, it might not be all, all unicorns and rainbows sometimes. But I'm telling you, as long as you stick to the plan, as long as you build what God told you to build, as long as you build what God told you to build, come on, let's say it again. As long as you build what God told you to build, saying Noah preached Noah walked with God I can imagine the times people came by I know they had to come by brother and look and see what was going on yeah. <laughs> this man's building this thing look how crazy this is yes. we don't even know what he's talking about this rain stuff he's talking about 
And he's telling us something we ain't never heard of before. It's going to fill this earth up to the highest mountain, the high, cover the highest peak, Come on. and destroy all of the earth. Everything in it, every creature, except what's going to be on that boat. Come on. Stick to the plan. You see, a lot of us have a plan. Every one of us have a plan sitting here today. I don't care if you're not filled with the Holy Ghost or if you are. God's got a plan. If you're not filled with the Holy Ghost, the plan is God's starting it right now. You're hearing His Word. You're hearing His Word. God has started a plan in your life. Whether you want to see it or not, that's up to you. You have free will, but I'm telling you, God wants to do something in your life. God has a plan. And you need to stick to it. You see, Noah, Building that boat. I'm sure getting questions from his sons. Dad, you sure this is what we need to be doing? <laughs> Are you sure? I went down to the store today. And they laughed me out of that place, Dad. <laughs> telling me how crazy you are. Telling me how ridiculous we look building this boat. Bill, they even know what it was probably. I don't know what y'all built. But look how crazy, look how dry it is out here. Your daddy's been preaching that, what, for the last 10 years? 20 years? 30 years? And this dry as a bone. But God gave him a plan. You see, so many of us, with our plans we have, when we get through the times that people begin to look at us and say, look how silly she looks. Look how silly he looks. What do you mean you don't involve yourself in that? What do you mean you don't partake in those things? How ridiculous and how silly it looks. You know how long they've been preaching that Jesus is coming back? Do you understand that the world is still going? That technology is still expanding and they're still preaching Jesus is coming back. I haven't seen anything yet. Come on. Come on. God has a plan. And many of us, you know what we do? We begin to deviate from the plan. We begin to build lifeboats. You see, Noah, one thing about Noah, when he heard from God, no matter 120 years, he kept his head down. He kept talking to God. He kept building the boat. He stuck to the plan. the door. You see, once God moves, that's it. I'm telling you, stick to your plan. Stick to the plan that God has placed in your life. You're so here, you're deviating, you're trying to feel like folks, because things are getting hard, things are getting rough, and might be getting a little tough. But I'm here to tell you, here to preach you today, you stick to the plan. Yeah. something from God and God doesn't give the total. He right. just knows you. this is what I've commissioned you to do. Right. Right. The man of God has to do it to the best of his ability. Yes. Seeking God and staying close to God. Yes. Yes. Amen. A lot of times we, we, begin, we, we don't understand those things. Come on. Well, I don't understand why pastor is making us do that. Hmm. Well I just don't think that's a heaven or hell issue. Hmm. And I'm not going to get on that but I'm going to tell you, the, the scripture says they got principles. We, we, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers. Yes, yes. Look up what principalities are. Right. They're princes that, that, the, that the enemy sets over areas. Oh, yes. there's, there's, there's generals. They said, you, you, you don't believe that? You better read your Bible. Right. I'm telling you, the enemy, devil got his stuff together. Right. 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 
You think he's just going to let the Pentecostal watch it come on in here and start reaching out for souls and reaching people? No, he has a general set here. And it may be certain things, certain things that they lust of the flesh or whatever it may be in this area that your pastor has to look on the wall and say, oh, hold on, I see it coming. Come on, church. we got to put on our battles here. we got to come against us with the enemy. So we start building lifeboats. Yeah. I don't read nowhere in Genesis where God said, hey, Shem, in case your daddy don't listen to me, build a lifeboat. Come on now. Right. Come on. Come on. Come on. You see the reason why you're so frustrated. The reason why you're so agitated in your spirit. Come on. <laughs> you're trying to seek God, but you can't get no further. It's because you've been building a lifeboat right. contrary to the word of God. Contrary to the plan. You see, when we don't build lifeboats, what we're telling God is, God, I'm all in. God, I don't have a backup plan. Come on, I told my wife that. If y'all don't believe in me and my wife, we have disagreements. <laughs> believe me, she can handle herself too. I know some people say the way I look, believe me, it don't scare her one bit. <laughs> I love her. I'm thankful God placed her in my life. I need her. He knew it. But I told her, I said, I'm not going nowhere. I'm all in. All twenty dollars I have, baby, it's me and yours. I don't have nothing put up. I don't have a backup plan, baby. Me and you are in it together. What you see is what you get. Come on, somebody. It's time that we stop building lifeboats. It's time that we get with the plan that God has placed us in and say, God, I don't have a backup plan. Lord, I'm all in this thing. Whatever you want to do, God, I'm for it. I don't care what comes our way. As hard as it gets, as high as it, as dry as it gets. Come on, somebody. so many things that come across you that you ain't going to agree with. And God's trying to teach me some things right now. <laughs> because there's some times I don't agree with some things, brother. But it's not about who's right or wrong. It's about whether we stick to the plan regardless of how we feel about it. So if I don't agree with something, I'm going to deny somebody a Bible study because I'm upset. Come on. If I don't agree with something because I'm over here building my life, but I'm too worried about what's going on. I'm, I, I'm, I'm too worried about building my selfish life, but the one over here that needs a Bible study, the one over here that needs prayer, the one over here that needs some intercession in their life that we need to intercede for. We can't pay attention. We can't follow God. God gave this to me this morning. I'm just, God was giving you what God in my heart. Hallelujah. We get so that righteous indignation comes up in us. And God's trying to show us look, I don't care how your flesh feels. I don't care how agitated you get. We have to stay the course. We have to stay. Like the coach used to say, okay, we got to stay in the pocket. We just got to stay there. No matter what's coming at us, we got to stay focused. We got to stay on our knees. We got to stay preaching. We got to stay moving towards God. We got to stay the truth. Come on, somebody. It's time to be to the plan. It's time to stop deviating from the plan.
Me and my wife have been praying. I hadn't been preaching. I hadn't preached out. I was just preaching at home. And me and my wife had been praying. That's when I was working. I was working out of town. I was working turnarounds. I was a, I was a quality control manager over turnarounds. And then I got a call. <clears throat> They're opening up a pipe shop when I'll be home. They want me to be the manager over the shop. Thank you, Lord. We had some bumpy roads in that shop. But they called me and said, hey, we're going to send you out of town one more time. Last call. We, we got a special call just for you to come to that plant because I've been there before. And they were familiar with me. They want me to train somebody. So this will be the last time you go out of town. You come back to the shop and you'll be done. You won't go out more. Sounds good. Well, that point in time is when COVID hit. Yeah. <laughs> and I was on that job. I've been with this company almost 15 years. <clears throat> and they called me. We had people getting scared, leaving the job. I mean, it was a mess. Got a call. They shut the whole pipe shop down. And they decided they didn't make enough money because they got shut down because of COVID. So they just said, we're not going to open it back up. So I got a call and said, hey, if you don't take your vacation when you get off this job, we're going to lay you off. So I put in my three weeks of vacation. And I came on home. And I had COVID when I was out there. That people ran and scared and doing all this stuff. And I had COVID the whole time. I lost my smell and taste for three months when I came back. And if you know me, you can look at me. I, can, I like to eat. That was horrible, horrible, horrible. That is it. COVID is of the devil, I'll tell you that. When a Cajun can't taste crack in the boot air, brother, that's a bad deal. I'm telling you. So I came back in three weeks, and I'm praying, seeking God. In the last week left, they called and said, we got a job for you in North Dakota. And I'm talking North, North Dakota. I'm talking on the Canada line. Up there. Oh. We want you to go for six months. Oh. And I don't know about y'all, but you can tell, I can tell you, my wife was like, You only been home for three weeks and you fix to leave for six months. That's not happening. <laughs> we need to pray. <clears throat> she was listening to Sister Sharon McKee. I was walking through the house. And I remember I heard the very word she said, If you if something controls your life besides God and you do everything that, that thing wants you to, that's your God. Yeah. And it spoke to me. And I, I decided right then and there to quit. I'm not going to North Dakota. I quit. Yeah. God, I'm, I'm stepping out for you. Yeah. I quit. It's got to be God's plan for me. Yes. Amen. So I drive up there to the shop. Said, hey, I can't do this. You know, I can't go. And he said, you know they're going to lay you off. I said, they know they're going to get me. I said, yeah, I know. They tried to give me a brand new truck. Tried to give me all this stuff. I was making upwards of 130000 a year. And I just said, no. It's not worth it. And I told him, I said, man, my soul and my family is more yes. important Amen. 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 than this job. Yeah. I sat home for six months. <laughs> I got spiritual <laughs> until the bank account started getting low, brother. <laughs> I'm going somewhere. Just, just bear with me. Come on. Come on. And I soon, I told my wife, I said, if my bank account gets to this, I'm going to find something. And guess what my bank account got to that? And I went and got a job, brother. Didn't feel right about it. Didn't feel good about it. But I had to get one. I had to, had to get a job. I had to get my bank account back to where. You see? When things get tough. Yeah. Come on. We seem to deviate from God's plan. Yeah. Come on. You see, I did a little deviation right there. God, I put a stipulation. You see, you can't put stipulations on God when God gives you right. the plan. Right. You see, Noah couldn't say, God. Well, if I'm going to build this boat, you need to help me preach and save more souls than just my family. Come on. All right now. Mm. You see, a lot of times when God gives us our plan, we either deviate from it, we put stipulations on God, and we wonder why we, it's so tough for us. It's, we wonder why it's so tough to come to prayer meetings. So we wonder why it's so hard to stay faithful to God because we put stipulations on God right. when God don't meet our stipulations. Right. So I went and got that job, and it was the worst job I've ever had in my life. <laughs> I literally almost died. Yeah. They put me back on my tools. I wasn't managing no more. And I was inside of a tower. And I've been in many of them. I've been in many, many towers. I've done this for many years. 
And it was so hot, it didn't have no air movers, no air, no nothing. Oh, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. And it was 100 plus degrees outside. Oh, Jesus. And I was inside that thing, and I was holding that piece of equipment, and all of a sudden I felt it. And I was on a scaffold about 40 foot high, and I was about to fall. I couldn't hold myself anymore. I couldn't control what I was doing. And I fell out that hole that man way. <clears throat> and at that point in my life, I said, God, what am I doing? Why am I in this place? What good this job is going to do? What good is money going to do if I'm not around no more to take care of my family? Right. Oh, come on. I walked out of there that day. Walked to the gate. I said, God, you got to move in my life. God, you got to do some things in my life. I sat home for six more months. Yeah. Brother, I couldn't buy a job. Right. I put in applications to O'Reilly Auto Parts. They wouldn't even hire me. Yeah. <laughs> I know how to weld. I know how to fit. I know how to do all these things. I couldn't even get a job at the auto parts store. Mm -hmm. And it got to a point where God had got me. And I ended up getting in that wreck. I said, God, what's going on? More debt. But God paid things off through that wreck. And God did some things. You see, we may not understand God's plan. And God's plan may be a little uncomfortable. God's plan may hurt sometimes. But I'm going to tell you, He will never fail you. You'll come through that. You'll come through the hurt and pain. Redeemed understanding. Powerful. Insight to it. I am no job. I can't pay my mortgage. I'm hurt. I couldn't even go get a job if I want to because I'm hurt. Jeez. And the job I got now is where I told my friends where it just flood my life. I'm not making near the money. Nowhere close to it, brother. But you know, when it don't make sense is when God makes sense. Yes. Oh. 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 <laughs> you see, God's plan the whole time was to take me somewhere and put me where I could touch somebody's life. Right. You see, we look at the monetary things, we look at material things so much in our life, and we don't look at God's plan in our life, we don't look at the spirituality in it. I'm telling you, God don't place you just anywhere. Right. Come on, God didn't place me at Homestead shop just because he thought I'd be a good fit because he thinks I'm going to move up in the company. No, there's somebody so there I need to yes. reach. No, there's something there that God wants you to complete as part of his plan. And I cannot deviate from it just because somebody gives me a better offer somewhere. I gotta say, God, is it in your plan for me to go somewhere else? And when he says no, I don't care how much money it is. I'm on a plan that God has given me. I'm gonna move when God tells me to move. I'm gonna jump when God tells me to jump. You 
have deviated long enough. God said he's going to destroy that lifeboat. You need to allow him to take your hands off of it. God is fixing to let it destroy it. He wants you to pull your hands up and say, I am all in. God, I will go where you're at. God, I will listen to where you're at. I will follow you. Hallelujah. Glory, glory. Come on. Come on. Come on, I'm talking about sticking to the plan. Oh, Come on, God's not trying to embarrass you. God is so mercy this morning. God is saying, I need you. they're in. I don't care if they're backslid. I don't care if they ever known God before in their life. If you see a man, that, one of the men that are in your life that should be up here, I want you to pray for them. And I want when we begin to pray, I want you to pray for that person as if they were standing right here. Do you understand? Come on, sit back. God's just to do something. I'm telling you, you see me. I'm not taking any way thing from you ladies. I'm telling you, God has placed some prayer warriors in this church. But I'm going to tell you one thing that the enemy is scared of. is when a man can come together and stand before God. And allow God to move the way he is supposed to move in their life. The enemy is scared of the priest of the home when he finally makes a stand for God. When he finally says, I have the spiritual authority in the Holy Ghost. You're not allowed to be in my home no more. I'm going to stick to the plan that God has given me. I'm going to pray for you guys. God is going to have a plan for each and every one of you up here right now. And you have a spiritual authority. You have a spiritual authority. Do not ever let the 